I would say probably caramel macchiato because I feel like I gave my coffee fix. I love the um, candy cane ice cream at Christmas time. The favorite flavor is probably the um, double chocolate chip. Growing up, those black raspberry chocolate chip, that's the classic, most popular. Um, my favorite seasonal cinnamon, and then my favorite sorbet is dragon fruit sorbet. But I also love the bourbon pecan and, and the uh, toffee is probably some of my favorites. The chocolate guy. Black cherry chip, that's probably my number one. Cookie dough chip and then s'mores, and I rotate between them all. But I'm really partial to the chocolate malts. <laughs> There's probably not much that I don't like. Uh, favorite flavor, that's just kind of a, I don't know, I get a lot of, a lot of uh, guff for that. My favorite flavor is vanilla. I love our Madagascar vanilla bean, I, I love that. But there are many seasonal flavors that I love. Like right now, uh, we have peppermint stick, which I really, really like. Uh, you know, I, I like peach ice cream in the summer. So there's many flavors I like. It's hard to, it's like, you know, your children. You know, you know there's not one that you like the best, but there's a lot of good flavors. My name is Chip Grader. I'm a part of the fourth generation of Grader's families to uh, help run the Grader's ice cream business. Um, well, it's kind of a long history, but in the short and sweet answer is uh, we, you know, we're a small family business really that uh, started in, in the late 1870s, early 1870s, and, and uh, with my great-grandfather, he came over from Indiana, his parents had immigrated from Germany and uh, he came to Cincinnati because he was, didn't like living on the farm, and so he came to, to Cincinnati to kind of strike out on his own. And so uh, he made ice cream um, downtown and, and, and uh, sold it, made it every day and sold it on a cart, out of a cart. And, uh, you know, and he was pretty successful at it and his business continued to grow. He was just a hardworking entrepreneur and uh, so he saw success, and so he slowly started to grow. Um, we, he, he, he married, and uh, him, him and his wife uh, continued to grow the business. Um, he unfortunately was killed, and uh, his wife was named Regina, and she um, took, took over the business. So we have a lot to, uh, to be thankful for to her, because uh, a woman of the 1920s and 19-teens was, um, a pretty, a pretty amazing thing for a woman of that era to be able to run a business. And so she pretty much ran the business. Uh, she was known as the boss and uh, she uh, really had, had a great um, you know, ability to see the, the growth of the business. She uh, expanded the business, our stores. She opened up a lot of stores. She bought our, our first factory in 1933 in Mount Auburn and uh, she continued to run the business and, and and developed the, the ice cream business and candy business. In the late 50s, they brought in bakery. And so today you have a, an ice cream, candy, and bakery uh, company that uh, started really, um, a, a woman is really the person that we look to as somebody that really helped propel us to where we are today. I'd say we pride ourselves on being a, a family-run business that, that looks to not just our family, but the families of, of our workers, and, and they're part of our family. And I think really we pride ourselves on being a, a family for um, the, the citizens of Cincinnati. I think we, we look upon that very seriously and, and take pride in the fact that you know, we've been around a long time and uh, we continue to make a product, our ice cream. Uh, we make it the same way we made it 150 years ago. All of our pints are packed by hand. Um, so I'd say that attention to detail and that attention to the time-honored tradition of how we make it is what makes Grater special. Um, the way we make our chocolate chips is, is, is special. We pour liquid chocolate into, into the ice cream once it's almost frozen and, and creates these big chocolate chips that people love. Um, so, you know, I think those are some of the things that make, make Grader's special. My name is Tiffany Barber. Um, my role at Grader's is I work in the retail training department. Our customer service is not hard at all. They come in happy because it's ice cream and candy and bakery. So, you know, having that aspect of it, it's 
it's, it's easy, it's second nature. So my whole goal when people walk in here, I try to prefer to make it not really seem like a transaction, but more of an experience. So what I like to do is when people walk in, I like to be very welcoming. I like to kind of show them around, let them know we don't just have ice cream, we have bakery, we have ice cream cakes, we have a bunch of cookies, candy. We just want to make them feel like it's more of an experience that they enjoy being here and coming back to. It's not just a one and done type of thing. Yes, we have ice cream. Yes, it's the best ice cream I've ever had. I want to make sure they know that, but I also want to make sure that they can understand that it's so much more than just the ice cream. There's so much effort that's put into making all of it, and it's just something they should really want to experience. Creators doesn't have anything in our stores that anybody has to have. It's absolute, absolute luxury. It's a, it's a treat. And so we want to make sure that folks, when they do come in, that they're greeted and they're happy about being there and they leave being content with a great product and they leave with a smile. That's really what we want. You make them feel appreciated. Um, you have that real good connection with them as soon as they walk into the door to the moment they walk in to the moment they leave. So you're being with them the whole time. You're connecting with them, you know, um, and you're just being real. It's always going to be about that one-on-one -on -one that matters. Even when you're busy, each customer still has value regardless of what they're getting. One thing that I actually really speaks like measures to me is the tones for the cure. I'm the co-founder of The Cure Starts Now, and I'm a dad. Uh, the Cure Starts Now started when we lost our daughter, Elena, to a type of cancer called DIPG. Um, it's a cancer that back then, no one really knew anything about it. No, they just knew that it was kind of the worst of all the cancers that you could possibly get. And um, there really wasn't any um, chance of survival. That's, that's how they meet you. They tell you that this is the cancer they're most scared of. Um, and they tell, the, tell you that, um, now they told us that our daughter had five months to live. Um, when that happened, uh, we, you know, my wife and I um, wanted to effectively preserve as much of our, our oldest, Elena, uh, for our youngest daughter at that time, Grace. And Grace was only three, Elena was only six. Um, we were scared. And so what we set out to do was we set out to record uh, her memories and effectively the, um, um, the experiences between two sisters in a thing at that point called a blog. As we recorded the stories, uh, what we didn't realize is that a blog isn't private and it got passed around and a lot of people started reading it, a lot of people started finding out about it. Um, that became one thing because we got a whole lot of people that started following it and kind of scared us a little bit, but it made, it made it so that her story got out there and people started to learn what DIPG was and it started this rallying cry. But what also happened there was um, midway through it, we started talking to doctors and they said that this was the cancer when they were in college that they wanted to study, that they wanted to learn more about. That's frustrating. It's frustrating when they tell you that your daughter has no chance. It's even more frustrating when all the doctors tell you that they all really wanted to focus on this, but when they got out of college, there wasn't anybody who was supporting it. And this type of research was considered to be a tenure killer. and so they went into something else. That night, um, I sat down and, and wrote something different than about the stories between Elena and Grace um, into this blog. Um, not knowing anybody was reading it, I wrote about how we were curing cancer wrong, how we were focusing on cancer by those that affect the greatest number of people rather than those that we can learn the most from. And um, we wrote in that journal, and the last words of that journal were the words, the cure starts now. Um, didn't figure anybody was reading it. Figured that, you know, it was me just venting. And uh, what happened was folks started reading it around the country and uh, they started to support a cause that I guess we named called The Cure Starts Now. That was kind of how we started thinking about whether we did it. Now, when we found that there was nobody focusing on this and when we felt that we really could have an impact, and that's, that's, a, that's a scary proposition in and of itself. Um, that's when we decided to start the charity. And the first thing that we decided after starting the charity is, okay, well, what are we gonna do? You know, what type of fundraiser are we going to do? Because apparently we needed to come up with money at that point to fund all this trial. So the first thing that we did was we said we need to have an event and we decided to have a gala. 
and in that we knew that we needed to have a sponsor and so we reached out to the Graders family and said would you guys be willing um, and I don't think it was even sponsorship I think I was a little scared to ask you just for a sponsorship I was asking them if they would allow somebody to make their own flavor of Graders ice cream and um, they came back and said, yeah, we'll let somebody go ahead and, and create their own flavor of, of ice cream. And that's what we did at our first gala. We auctioned off the chance for somebody to make their own flavor of Grater's ice cream, which is kind of cool. You know, that, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, once you say, yes, I want to start my own flavor, make my own flavor of ice cream, the next question is, well, what flavor are we going to create? And that got batted around for a bit, and they decided to come up with this flavor called Elena Blueberry Pie Ice Cream, and kind of took off from there. When uh, Elena's Blueberry Pie Ice Cream was first created by the Grodeke family and, and graders had it out there, the idea was we were just going to serve it to their family. And so um, it was supposed to be just kind of this one night, you know, bring your, 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 your uh, close family and, and maybe a couple of friends and invade a store and eat this one batch that they had made. Um, we didn't expect that the word was going to get out. I don't think graders did. I don't think we did. And ultimately, um, they either had a really, really big family or they told a lot of other people. And um, Graders was, was inundated to such a degree that I get a call from Chip Grader saying, I think we need to make another batch of this. And so they made another batch of it and he assured me that this was going to be enough for the family, all was going to be good. But then they started getting calls to the stores saying, well, do you have some of it? We want to try it. And ultimately it just kept getting bigger and from store to store to store, we had people that that were i mean there was i was hearing stories about people who were saying can i come to the store i'm bringing a tupperware and i just want to fill it with this ice cream you know so i can put it in my freezer and so ultimately Grader's family called me up and said all right i think we got to make this an actual flavor and we're going to bring it back every single year and we're going to call the thing cones for the cure and uh, just make an event out of it and um, it's you know, you get an opportunity to raise money for cancer research and you got to run a 5K. Or you get an opportunity to raise money for cancer research and you got to do telethons. Eating ice cream is so much easier and it's so much nicer and everybody can get behind that. And, um, and so it just kind of became this, this fundraiser every single time. Graders works with the Cure Starts Now Foundation. Um, I used to run stores for four years with Graders. I was a store manager. And, um, Back in 2011, when I started, uh, they we were doing a fundraiser for Cones for the Cure, which we still do today. Um, but I, I personally truly love um, cancer foundations and kids' cancer foundations, and cancer's really touched my family. So when I heard that Graders raises money for pediatric brain cancer research, and I was like, yeah, of course, that makes a lot of sense. So. As a store manager, I was really passionate about it. I got my team passionate about it. Um, and for every year that I was in a store, my store raised the most money because we were gung-ho. Um, and then when I came into this training position, it became my job to really um, get all the stores to be on board like my store was and to bring that excitement to everybody. And so through Graders, I got involved with The Cure Starts Now. Made over $1.6 million for, for the, the Cure Starts Now um, to help find a cure for, um, you know, pediatric brain cancer, which hopefully in turn would find the cure for many other cancers. So it's been a great relationship. It's been a great uh, uh, passion for us and our teams. The impact of graders is felt through that trial, through many other trials that we've done, I think the biggest thing though is, is that it's the longevity of it. It's knowing that Graders is going to be there that next year. It's knowing that we can invest in research that we don't even have yet and we can think towards the future. And I think what Graders has given us in particular is the ability to be able to think long term, to think in strategy because we know they're not going anywhere we know that their hearts are in it. And for that, I, that's the biggest gift I think that they, they give us, they give these families, is because um, they're delivering that hope, you know, quite literally one scoop at a time.
granddaughter, my first born granddaughter, um, got epilepsy when she was young and uh, she was actually like three and they put her on medication and she was losing a lot of weight. So I started picking her up from preschool and we'd come straight to graders and we would uh, get malts and milkshakes every day after school because I was trying to put some weight on her. And to keep her from getting bored, we would make up flavors and graders was nice enough to allow us to make crazy malts here. <laughs> So it was, it was fun. We would have candy cane malts and chocolate peanut butter, banana malts, and we would just come up with all kinds of different flavors to keep it. So a big part of it for us is that Graders is kosher certified. The ice cream is kosher certified. It's very inclusive for the Jewish community, and we appreciate that, that it's kosher certified as well as being one of the best tasty ice cream. Uh, what I would say to somebody who has not been to Graders before, and I've done this plenty of times with family coming in town, um, it's just the favorite, my favorite ice cream in the area, the Greater Cincinnati, and they need to have more in other areas. It's kind of like a community institution, which has gotten to the point from an operations level that they're able to consistently produce some of the best product around. And they really do care about other people, not just so much the business. They have a great business and they're just expanding and doing great, but the people part of it is so important to them. And I think that's why we're still here for so long. Obviously, since 1870, uh, it's not just going to be the ice cream. There's ice cream everywhere, but Traders just does other things beyond that with the philanthropy and everything like that. It's really cool.